Oh, hi everyone, I didn't see you there. This is one of the problems of VR today. If you're in virtual reality, it's hard to have interactions with people outside of virtual reality. Our research project, VR Tutor, addresses this and related challenges of integrating VR into courses. My name is Bjorn Hartmann. I'm an associate professor in EECS and the faculty director of the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation here at UC Berkeley. In this talk, my PhD student Bala Kumaravel will give you an overview of VR Tutor. But before that, I'd like to sincerely thank the Berkeley Changemaker Technology Innovation Grants for encouraging and supporting all the great projects we're seeing today. We appreciate the financial support, the regular check-ins, as well as innovation forums such as these, which allow for exchange of ideas across different teams. Let me now turn it over to Bala. Hi, everyone. Today, I will be presenting a progress on our research initiative, We Are Tutor. This work is close to my heart. It addresses a core issue that we users and instructors of VR face so often. But before I go into the technical details of the initiative itself, I would like to set some context of why and how this work came about. Since 2018, I have been involved with the running of the course CS294-137, Virtual Reality and Immersive Computing. This course caters to students having a wide variety of academic backgrounds. In the lecture sessions, the instructors teach the students the fundamentals and the theory behind virtual and augmented reality systems. Now, we have the VR lab sessions that are hosted at the Jacobs Hall. This is where the students typically learn hands-on um, developing AR VR programs from scratch. For this, students use a popular and well-documented game engine. In our course, we use Unity. So we walk through students on working with Unity and the students try this alongside in their own VR systems. And of course, some of them run into program bugs and some of them would want to showcase their work so that they can get feedback from their peers or the instructor. To do either of them, students first launch their VR application. They then wear their VR headset and proceed to use and point to different elements in their VR application. The instructor or a peer then views the first person video feed of what the student in VR actually sees. The process is similar even for the various projects that the students do as part of such courses. But viewing such first person VR feeds pose unique problems and we'll talk about it in this presentation. Not just in the context of this classroom setting, but this problem exists in other places too where users use generic VR applications for the purpose of public demos, workplace productivity, collaboration, as well as social gaming. Now, COVID-19 adds an additional layer to this problem. Users are not in the same location anymore too. We are all working from our homes. As an attempt to solve these issues, we developed the first version of VR Tutor and we presented the system at the WIS 2020 conference that happened a few weeks ago. Now, just to recap, the current status quo for communication with a VR user is the VR mirror. It shows what the VR user sees at that moment. But the VR user doesn't see the external user and their actions, and this often leads to frustrating and inefficient communication between the two. The external user constantly tries to guide or get to look at some particular portions of the VR user, and this is hard to communicate. Such interactions are commonly referred to as asymmetric interactions, where the users use two different interfaces. What our VR tutor system does is that it allows the external user to not just view the VR user, but also to interact with them by providing them with affordances to draw over a 3D space and share annotated screens. These are rendered as overlays over existing VR applications that are available on market. To better understand asymmetrical communications in VR, before we began the project, we first interviewed experts who carry out such interactions regularly. From our interviews, we found two main problems. First is due to the shaky first-person feed that is being observed by the external user. 
second issue is broadly about the difficulties relating to talking about virtual reality scene elements of different types. We identified that to solve these problems, one may need to augment an existing VR application with additional graphics and interfaces. There are different levels at which one can intervene and augment. And to be broadly useful to the global VR community, we built VR Tutor at the VR platform level. So it uses interfaces and strategies that can help augment both open source as well as closed source applications. Now let's walk through an example scenario that illustrates working with VR Tutor. The task is a collaborative 3D modeling task done using an existing closed source application named Blocks, uh, which is made by Google. Uh, here a first time VR user collaborates with an experienced external user who views the VR user's activity in real time through VR Tutor's iPad interface. To onboard the VR user, um, the user is new to VR, um, with the actions of the VR controller, the outside expert uses the controller panel. The interaction is quite simple. They press a button on the panel, and the corresponding button gets highlighted in blue on the VR user's controller. Note that these blue highlights are rendered by VR Tutor and not the Blocks application itself. The external user then proceeds to explain its role verbally and tells him what it does. Uh, now they need the VR user to load a specific 3D model from a grid of choices. So they share a prior frame to the VR user. The VR user places that frame at a convenient location in the environment. And the external user then marks the grid element to be chosen. Using that as a reference, the VR user proceeds to select that model and uh, performs or continues with the task. Now let's see how this interaction plays out for the external user. Since the 3D model grid ch changes continuously, it becomes hard for the external user to refer to a specific thing. So the external user chooses a prior frame from below. They then share that frame to the VR user. Then they proceed with marking the right object for the user to pick. This allows the external user to carefully inspect dynamic scene elements and also avoids frequent back and forth communication regarding these. After opening up the right model file, the external user wants the VR user to pick up a specific part. They directly annotate the part over the mirrored feed and then VR Tutor projects those annotations at the corresponding position in the 3D scene. Compared to annotating on a shared screen, this is an easier and a more direct interaction. Note that this works because unlike before, concerned objects here are static and stationary. If the part is not in the view of the VR user, the external user browses the frames captured at different angles in the VR scene, selects the desired frame, and then annotates over it. The VR user is then guided to that object through direction arrows rendered in the VR scene. This scenario also resembles our user study task. With uh, VR Tutor, uh, users completed such tasks significantly faster with fewer errors and perceived a lesser workload. It's important to note that these annotations need to be placed at the right depth, else they will not make sense when viewed from a different perspective. But how do we do this with just 2D video feeds? For this, we use a pair of video feeds, one each for the left and right eye of the VR user. We compute a live depth map of the scene through computing optical flows and subsequently disparity between them. To get the right constants, we calibrate using two cross two square grids at known positions in the scene. Now, where do we go next? As I said, COVID has added new layers of problem, but it is also an excellent opportunity for innovation. Uh, can we get VR Tutor to work remotely? As a first test, we used current version of VR Tutor together with Zoom screen sharing to allow for remote usage. An expert VR artist from the San Francisco creative arts community used it to teach virtual reality painting and art to my housemate who is not just new to VR but hasn't even held a VR system in their hand. The entire onboarding of the system as well as use of the VR application and tips and tricks of the VR art was taught effectively via this session. This provided us with some concrete evidence that we could definitely transform and massage this tool 
even for remote scenarios. VR Tutor does a lot of things and has a lot of features to facilitate efficient collaboration between a VR user and an external user. But this broad umbrella of features may not be uh, all required for the VR classes being taught in Berkeley. At the same time, the general purpose use case of VR Tutor also limits on what can be accomplished if we uh, just decide to stick to a specific technology stack. So now we are in the process of chatting with different GSI and instructors who teach these VR classes to figure out the specific needs posed by Berkeley's VR classes in this new era of remote instruction. Some common uh, commonalities we, found, we figured out are um, students almost always have access to the source code of the VR application involved in the process of the class instruction. Most of the VR development happens on the Unity engine. Students have been using Oculus Rift till recently and due to remote instruction scenarios, instructors are now considering shifting to Oculus Quest, which is more inexpensive to set up and is standalone. And finally, this should be accessible by multiple students and instructors remotely. Work is on progress in this and we plan to open source the upcoming tool that will be tailored specifically for Berkeley's classroom usage. So stay tuned to the project website for more details. Thank you for providing me an opportunity to present our progress in this forum.